Could the dwarf quest pack be coming after Frozen Horror, or is it more likely the adventure design kit? There's been some interesting hero quest news lately, but first, there's some Frozen Horror stuff I need to get out of the way. On July 12th, Zargon said, When your old minions aren't getting the job done, just go wake an ancient terror. An ancient evil awakens in the Northlands, and the barbarian must embark alone before gathering a party to track down the dreaded Frozen Horror. The quest is calling. Learn more about the Frozen Horror expansion for HeroQuest at our latest blog post. The world of HeroQuest expands north in the Frozen Horror. From deep within its icy tomb, the Frozen Horror summons its minions once more. There's another video in the same style as the Guardian Knight one. I know that this is basically just a picture, but it's cool to actually see the Council of Elders. Oh, and it appears to be another orc here as well. They're everywhere in the world of HeroQuest now. That's probably another D&D element, honestly. Another cool image there with the village. Before the mountain loads in here, I can't help but be reminded of Never Ending Story. I haven't seen the movie yet, I just know that iconic scene. Something I didn't notice on my first watch through is that there's wolves lurking on the left side of the screen too. Looks like the same door that's actually in the expansion with the Frozen Horror's face on it, and that's possibly a frozen orc there as well. Greetings adventurers! The next chapter of Hero Quest is almost arrived. An ancient evil long thought banished has arisen to threaten the Northlands once more. The ancestral home of the Barbarian, the Northlands, are the vast and frozen domain full of treacherous ice, malicious monsters, and hidden deep within, an ancient terror. The frozen horror has lain in wait, gathering its strength, and has finally come forth to aid Zargon's dread army. Though it is up to the four heroes to battle this fiend, first the Barbarian must overcome three challenges on their own to prove themselves worthy. And we have a nice promotional picture here that's important for something later. The Frozen Horror is the next expansion for HeroQuest, and you may now pre-order a copy through Hasbro Pulse. This expansion introduces a host of exciting materials to continue your HeroQuest experience. There are 21 fantastically sculpted miniatures, including a unique sculpt of a female barbarian and 12 mercenaries to join the heroes should they need assistance. But Zargon's forces are not left out in the cold. His army gains two polar war bears, two yetis, three ice gremlins, and the massive Frozen Horror itself. You'll also find two wonderfully sculpted frozen doors, 35 cards featuring spells, artifacts, and more, ice-themed traps and hazards, and more. These components will be used in a quest book that features three solo quests for the Barbarian, followed by five more quests designed for the core four hero team standard to hero quest. Finally, the campaign culminates in an epic double quest. The Frozen Horror, originally known as the Barbarian Quest Pack, is historically known to be a challenging series of quests so heroes will need to be careful traversing through these deadly dungeons. We look forward to hearing from our fans about what they think of the quests, and perhaps even how some of the mythic heroes fare in these crystalline tunnels. Yeah, I'd be curious to see that too. And Avalon Hill would have a particular interest in that if they were planning on releasing the mythic heroes again in the future. You can always pester Zargon for conversation on Twitter at HeroQuest, or leave feedback for the Avalon Hill team on Twitter at Avalon Hill, and don't forget to share your adventures with them on Instagram. Will your adventurers survive the harsh Northlands, or will the frozen horror reign supreme? The quest is calling. And you can pre-order it today with an expected release in August 2022, which is just a couple days now because I'm very late with this video. Searching it manually on the website, we are brought to some more images for it, as well as the listing itself where you can pre-order of course, with the expected delivery being September 1st, 2022. This first image we have seen before. The second one we have not. It's a close-up of the female barbarian. So if you were looking for what she looks like exactly without having to buy it yourself, this is perfect for you. Next is the same thing for the Frozen Horror. And look at this! This is the one that I thought looked weird and possibly photoshopped. And it's right here on their main page. Now here's the box sitting out in their icy display. Front and back, of course. Then they've set out some of the miniatures here as well, including that female barbarian. Oh, they've changed the lighting for this one. They have some coming through there, casting a shadow on the right side of the model. The mercenaries, close up of the cards, and the game system right beside the Frozen Horror quest pack. And Frozen Horror is now also in the Companion app, both for solo play and also if you don't want to be Zargon. But that's not all, because a month or two ago, Avalon Hill redesigned their website for Hasbro Pulse. If you go to the brands, click on HeroQuest, it takes you to this page now instead of just a generic listing. HeroQuest, embark on an epic adventure? This is a GIF from the gameplay video that they had posted on their YouTube channel. They have two different links here, Shop All HeroQuest and Starting Your Quest. The first one brings you to the listings page, and the second one brings you to all their blogs. 
There's a few more links to click on, and listings are here as well, and you can also sign up directly for news in your email inbox if you want that, and it's kind of a shame that they didn't implement that years ago, when people were having to get Transformers emails just to be able to find out what's going on with their Mythic tier. And this website redesign also indicates to me that they're going to be working on HeroQuest for a very long time, which leads me into the next set of news that you're here for. The first thing is that on July 15th, somebody was asking about an Egyptian themed expansion, which that could definitely be cool. With tombs and things like that, Egypt could be a perfect setting for a dungeoneering game, and Zargon responded with, I've been wanting some fancy new furniture, so it seems very likely, but maybe something dwarven or elven first. And that's what's hinting at the dwarf and elf quest packs coming next. The Elf Quest Pack was just confirmed at Gen Con, and I'll be speaking about that in detail shortly. The most interesting thing about that, though, is that there was no Dwarf Quest Pack released. Sure, there were details leaked by somebody in the future, but it was never made into a proper product in the 90s. So I'd be curious to see what Avalon Hill does with that. We might be getting some information about the design process for Hero Quest, because Blaze had asked for that, and Zargon's responding out of character right here. We sort of got this on Elviler.com because he did an interview with Stephen Baker and Doug Hopkins. This included Stephen Baker talking about the biggest challenge of your quest being keeping things simple to appeal to the widest audience possible. Somebody else asked if there would be a lore or history released in the future of HeroQuest, and Zargon said once he takes over the world, he shall write a biography. While this could just be some Zargon flavor, what if they were gearing up for some even bigger release than the retail release? On July 19th, somebody was asking about a misprint in the Return of the Witch Lord quest booklet. Zargon again responded out of character, saying thanks for the feedback, and that the typo should be fixed in future runs of the product. And then some people are sort of annoyed that Zargon's jumping back and forth between the Dread Sorcerer and also Mike from Customer Service. But it's probably better this way because I know some people have been annoyed with Zargon being in character. The next cool thing is a possibility of the Adventure Design Kit coming back. This was a release that was only in the UK, and it seems like Avalon Hill could be working on re-releasing it worldwide soon. The original design kit had stickers, they had a bunch of different blank quest maps, and some tips for creating your own adventures as well. So in terms of content, this expansion is really just expanding upon the blank map concept. It's old news at this point, but I found out about it from Amalgamash, and he discovered it through the HeroQuest fans Discord. There's also this website here that compiles two of the pictures together. It straight up says Adventure Design Kit on it, and you have this blank map here, you have all the different symbols that you need to create a quest on the right side, as well as a spot for the quest notes, and a spot to put which wandering monster it is. Our second picture is of the same thing far away. This is a sheet that they were giving away at Gen Con, but on August 1st, Zargon also released it in PDF form. Aspiring Zargons, hear me. I grant unto you the power to craft your own devious dungeon within which you can ensnare your own problematic heroes. Create dread with the full page here. Clicking on that page, it's just a big image of the thing that we saw already, and it's really just this one page at the moment, with each of the icons still being a little bit too large to fit into a single tile, and so I'd assume that this is more of just for your reference and then you can quickly sketch it out here. But if they're going to be doing this and not re-releasing the full adventure design kit, a tool like HeroQuest Builder would probably still be better and more flexible as well. Although you can't go wrong with classic pen and paper. The final thing that caught my eye is somebody who was not satisfied with the game that they received. They were expecting just a couple replacement figures, but what they got was a brand new game. And they noticed some differences. The first thing that really stands out is that the new one is a lot smaller here. You can see just how much shorter it is and it does not have that cardboard spacer in there, most likely. One more thing to notice here is that the bigger game has the old Avalon Hill logo, same as with the Mythic tier and our retail releases, but this new smaller one has the new Avalon Hill logo. This is the old setup with the big clips to hold everything in place that makes some stuff way too tight, and in the new one, the clips they don't overlap quite as much if they are there, as well as the fact that everything is covered with a sheet of plastic here as a way to keep everything secure without having them in tight, and so that should hopefully make everything way easier to remove, as well as get rid of one of the main criticisms with the game. That's just showing a difference in the two chairs, one's very warped, the other one is not. A bunch of the warped doors, while those ones are pretty much all straight, there's still one or two crooked ones, but it's nothing like the first version that they had. And the first tray of minis, which you can see, yeah, they're all looking pretty tight in there. And then the new tray of minis has an extra gap right there that the old version did not have, and I would assume that that's for their vacuum forming equipment. Let's take something like this Dread Sorcerer here. You can see how he's all clipped in everywhere, but on the new version, there's plenty of space around him to be able to pull him out quite easily. 
And if this is how game copies look in the future, I think that people will be satisfied with it. Yes, it means that you may not be able to use the same battle foam or felt her stuff as before, but you really don't need those options quite as much if the tray is actually functional. If you haven't seen it yet, I did a video about the Rogue Air of Elethorn, and fairly soon I'll be speaking about Mage of the Mirror in detail. Goodbye.